everyone, it's Sammy from Sammy Sweet Life and today is going to be my December chit chat video. I've got a couple of minor things to talk about. This one should be relatively short. So the first thing is I am going to be taking a break during the month of December. I'm going to take the last two weeks off of filming. Both of my channels will go dark. Zero filming on the channels. I'll show you guys the, the dates here. I'm, I changed this around so you guys can see it. The last two weeks of December. So I will start back filming bright and early January 1st. I, I usually put my videos up at 9 a.m. Central Time. So you could expect the same thing starting January 1st. The last day potentially I'll have a video up is December 17th. So it really depends on if I have that Saturday video or not. Um, but the next two weeks I'm taking off. We're actually gonna have family here over the Christmas break. So I'm pre-scheduling things even just the next two weeks. I'm gonna have most of the videos pre-scheduled as of um, this video going up pretty much. My videos will be complete. Aside from the grocery hauls, I'll have everything else pre-scheduled. Um, so it'll be nice and easy and I'll probably, um, this week that I have this video going up, I'll probably pre-schedule that first week in January videos. So I can just relax and enjoy the holiday. I had to move over a little bit. There's like light shining through the blinds that was kind of going across my face. So I just scooted over a little bit. Um, anyway, anyway, I'm excited to take a little bit of a break. I, I don't feel burned out or anything. I definitely want that break. I want to be able to spend time with family without thinking about videos at all. And so it'll be a nice little break how that's really gonna go because I'm just used to filming. I really like filming so it might be a little bit difficult for me to just set the camera down for an entire two weeks but I'm still excited for it. Um, so let's see. Another thing I want to talk about is I changed my editorial calendar. So I had been using this and then I decided halfway through November to try to use iCalendar. So it's on my MacBook and it and it syncs up to my phone calendar so I can just see the videos that way. I've been using it for a couple of weeks and so far I've really liked it because I move things around so much that having a pen and paper system is just a lot of extra work. I'm, you know, crossing things off, I'm whiting things out, I'm trying to erase erasable pens and um, I did, I've tried repositionable stickers at some points and nothing's just really as fluid as using a digital editorial calendar. So I'm testing it out so far. I'm really liking it. If I do like it, I will have a video in January for you guys sharing, you know, my system. That's just been something I've been playing around with. With the holidays coming up, we're decorating, probably decorating this weekend. It's Saturday while I'm filming this. We might do it today. We might do it tomorrow. I think we're going to get it done this weekend. So I'm really excited about that. This is Olivia's first Christmas where she kind of knows what's going on. Last year she was really small, so she didn't really get it. I think this year she's going to get it a lot better. She's going to like opening presents, I think. Um, I think she'll like the Christmas tree. It'll be really fun. It'll be the first Christmas that we get to do a lot of fun things with her. So the rest of the topics I want to talk about are kind of sad, Debbie Downer type of things. I'm going to kind of leave an outro here so that if you guys don't want to hear any of the more um, sad and negative things, you don't have to. So I'm just going to say my Christmas exit for you guys here. Um, I hope you guys have a very, very happy holidays. Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, happy Hanukkah, whatever it is that you celebrate. I hope that it's magical for you guys. Aside from family coming, we don't have any major plans, but we're really, really excited to have family. We're gonna host Johnny's parents. We're gonna host my mom. So it's gonna be really fun to have all the grandparents here and Olivia gets to spend time with them. She has just loved spending time with them and she's been FaceTiming with all the grandparents. She's been loving that. It just turns into a little show off when we're FaceTiming with them and it's really, really cute to watch her interact and she'll kiss the phone and it's just super duper cute. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start the not so happy stuff I wanna talk about here. So you can cut the video off if you want to or you can keep watching. So all the kind of sad things wrap together and I just, I, I don't know, everything kind of hit me this month and I'm just a little bit more blue than I was the previous couple of months because it just kind of hit me all over again. And especially like working through the next thing I'm gonna talk about, we finally got back Emma's paw prints. So Emma passed away in, I think she passed away the last day of August or 
first part of September, we got her ashes back really quickly. What we did for all the dogs is we did have them cremated and we've got little like wooden boxes with their ashes in them. And we also get back a paw print. So that's just kind of a standard thing when you lose a pet, a lot of vet offices do that. Um, so we finally got back her little paw print. And um, it was just kind of a, kind of an ordeal. <laughs> um, when we got back her ashes, the paw print's supposed to be included with that and it wasn't. And so I just, I couldn't deal with it at that time when we got back the ashes. So a couple of weeks later, I um, called the, I called the animal hospital and they didn't have her paw print. And so they gave me the number for the cremation place who does the paw prints and the cremation. And they ended up having it. And they actually are on a complete opposite side of town from us. So it's really far away. They delivered it to the animal hospital and then we picked it up from the animal hospital. So all of this took time, all the steps in between. We finally got it back and I'm so thankful that we got it. And um, when I was talking on the phone with the guy and he put me on hold to go check because they, you know, he said they never throw anything away. So of course they've got it. They just don't know where it is at this point. And um, he came back to the phone and he said, we have it. And I just started bursting into tears. I was so happy that they had it. So yeah, so that kind of all hit me over again that we lost three dogs this year and it's just absurd because um, especially Emma, the other two we knew, we knew we were gonna lose them either this year or next year, um, but we didn't expect Emma to be gone for quite a few years. She was our youngest dog, she was only eight. And so um, it's still like, I still get mad. I still get mad when I think about it, like why, why did she have to go? I'm just glad that we had the years with them. So I've got all three other paw prints here. We've got Snow's paw print, which you know, she's a much bigger dog. So I've got the big one. And then Maya's little paw print. And then of course, this little paw print I already showed you. So we've got the three little paw prints and they're so cute. And it just makes me sad to not have them here. And having four dogs was insane. Um, it was hard to have four dogs. I don't know how people do it with like four kids. Like That's even way harder. So I just, I can't imagine. And I can't believe we had four dogs. We actually had five dogs at one point. So it was just insane. But we ended up with so many dogs because I volunteered at an animal shelter in high school and in college. And so, you know, I would see the dogs and I would be there one day and all the kennels would be full and I'd come back in another day and they would be cleared out. They'd have to make room for new dogs. I mean, I'm not gonna spell it out for you guys, but you guys know, you know what happens when the animal shelters are overcrowded. So I wanted to do my part and try to save as many dogs as possible. It got to this point where we looked at it and we're like, okay, these dogs take a lot of work. They, especially when they get older, they take a lot of work. They take a lot of resources. They take a lot of time. And it was, it was kind of overwhelming, especially after having Olivia, having four dogs was a lot. So I mean, in that sense, things are so much easier now with just Bella. And Bella's such an easygoing dog anyway. So it's just been a huge life change just to have one dog versus four in the matter of six months. So it's been different, it's been an adjustment. I mean, of course we miss our dogs, but we actually really like having just one dog. And at some point, you know, she's she's almost 11 years old. So at some point in the next couple of years, we'll be dogless. Um, so that's gonna be a huge change. And we, you know, right now we're renting, so it's not an option for us to adopt another dog. Uh, but when it is an option, I don't think we're going to. I don't think we're gonna get another dog anytime soon. I can see us being dogless for a while. I think at some point we will get another dog, but we're just totally not ready. Like this is, this was a really traumatic year for us. We're not willing to jump back into getting another dog anytime soon. In fact, I found a lost dog this last week. I panicked, I am totally panicked. It was the cutest little terrier type of dog. I took it to the vet to try to get it microchipped. It didn't have a microchip and I freaked out. I was like, how am I gonna find the owners of this dog? We can't keep this dog. I was panicking at the idea of, you know, being stuck with this dog and I definitely wouldn't take it to an animal shelter because I know what happens sometimes at the animal shelter. We would have definitely tried to find its home, but thankfully I found its owner relatively quickly. So it was only like a matter of a couple of hours that um, we had the 
the puppy. It was basically a puppy. It wasn't a full grown dog yet. And it was hyper and I'm just like, I am not ready. I was almost in tears, like at the idea of keeping the dog and it brought back all the feelings of missing the other dogs. So I am definitely totally not ready for another dog anytime soon. So it has been a big, huge adjustment and I'm still not over it. I don't know how long it's gonna take for me to be over it. Probably a long, long time. But it all just kind of flooded back this month with the paw print thing, with the other dog thing. It was just a really hard month emotionally for that part of it. And going along with that, and I don't know if it's sparked from the same thing. It might have to do with something else uh, that I'll talk about in part of this, but I'm really, really missing champagne. I'm really missing my friends. We sold our house. It could just be that that's all finalized now and really we're Texans now. We don't have a house in Champagne, so there's nothing linking us there anymore. So it could just be that. It could be that one of my best friends just had a baby and just not being able to celebrate with her, not being able to just drop off food for her like I did the first time. She had her first baby a couple months before I had Olivia, so her having her second baby and just not being there for her has been hard and I miss, I miss them and I miss my other friends and it's just hard knowing, you know, our kids aren't gonna grow up together. And not that I thought they were gonna grow up together forever. I just thought that we'd have more years together, especially when they're younger. I thought they were gonna be, you know, best friends when they're young. So that's just been hard. I've been really missing people this last month, especially because it really hit me once we sold the house. We're no longer gonna live in Champagne, and this is final and it really feels final now. Whereas before it kind of felt like a little bit of a vacation. Now it feels really real and it's just kind of sinking in and it doesn't feel good right now. So again, I'm gonna go back to um, what I've said, I don't know, a couple months ago. I'm definitely blue. I'm definitely bluer than I have been in a long, long time but I don't think I'm depressed and I don't think I need medication. I definitely can still function. I definitely have happy times, but it is just an overall level of, I'm not my normal everyday ecstatic happy self. And you know, that kind of comes in different stages of life where you're gonna have not so happy times. And that's not to say we're not happy. It's not to say I'm not happy a lot of the time because I am and Olivia definitely keeps me definitely keeps me smiling and definitely keeps me happy. Um, but I do have that sense of sadness. I'm trying not to cry, but I definitely do have that sense of sadness where, you know, I'm, I'm mourning the loss of our old life. I'm mourning the loss of our dogs. Aside from us still being a family and still having Bella, basically our whole life has changed. We don't own a house, we're building a house, we're renting right now. Um, things are totally different here. It's a different environment totally not around the same people. Johnny still has the same job, but it's definitely a different situation where now he's commuting versus before he had like a 10 minute drive. It was really easy. This is a, a bigger deal. He definitely has a huge commute now. And so it's been a huge adjustment for our family and for our life. Our, life's, our lifestyle is different. And that's not to say it's bad because we've gotten so much better opportunities here than we would have in Champaign. He's got an amazing job. He kept his same job, but he got a raise. And not only that, we don't have state income tax here. So that's like a 4% raise right off the bat, just moving here. So um, financially speaking, um, we're in a much better place than we were in Champaign. And not only that, I had talked about one of the reasons we moved in the first place was because there weren't very many other job opportunities where we were. Um, there weren't a lot of tech companies there. And so if he were to ever need to switch jobs for any reason, you know, getting laid off, getting laid off, getting fired, um, just wanting to leave and get a new job, you know, if there's any sort of problem that ever arose, we'd be stuck, you know, he'd be stuck in that job because there weren't other opportunities really. Well, here we just moved to a huge town that has millions of people. There are tons and tons of tech companies. He could switch tech companies at any point if he wanted to. So that right there to me says job security. He's really good at his job and I don't foresee, you know, anything happening to his current job, um, but that gives him opportunities that he wouldn't have had had we stayed in Champaign. And that was always kind of in the back of our minds that, you know, something happens to his job, we're probably gonna move. And something happened to his job and we had to move. So I don't 
think that'll be the case if anything else happens with his job. I think we'll be able to stay in Austin as long as we want to stay in Austin, which is a good feeling. I do have that sense of feeling that we're, we're home. We're going to stay here for a while. And so that part of it feels good. But the part that's hard about that is we're in the middle of transitioning from a house. We're building a house. It's not going to be done, I think, seven or eight more months, possibly longer. So we're in that state of we're going to be moving again. So it's a very temporary situation. So that leaves it to where I can't settle. I can't feel really comfortable. That's part of what's at play right now is we're just kind of in that waiting situation. I can't really put down roots right here because we're going to be moving 45 minutes away. It's hard to try to make friends all over again, knowing the same thing's going to happen in a year. I'm going to have to walk away from any friends that I make pretty much because it's just prohibitively far to travel for playdates and stuff. I'm just in that transition phase, I guess. I'm trying to kind of roll with that, that I know it's temporary. So I know it'll get better. And it's just one of those months, I guess, that I, all of the sad stuff really set in and it hit me and it's a lot of missing people and pets. That's where I am. You know, I do have that sadness in the background, but most things are good. We're doing great as a family. We're doing great financially. We're building a house. I'm so excited about the house. I'm really, really excited for them to make some progress on this. It seems like once they get going on the houses, they start becoming houses really, really quickly. I've seen a couple of the neighboring houses go from a cleared out lot to, you know, a framed house really, really quickly. So I know once the process gets going, we'll get to see some major progress. So I'm really excited about that. But yeah, again, we're just waiting. It's a lot of waiting. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off here. I've rambled enough. I hope you guys have a great holiday, whatever you celebrate. I'll have videos the next couple of weeks, then I'm gonna take my break, and then I'll come back January 1st. I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great day.